Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by a contribution from Nikki, and here's her story. I was with my ex for almost 13 years. We have a 10-year-old son. We took in my cousin's 16-year-old son after CPS wanted to put him in foster care. I had no idea my cousin and his wife were using meth. Meth is a bitch. I was told they fell on financial hardships. Allegations spread he was sexually abused by his mother and she was a narcissist. I'll send this nightmare another time. I felt like I had moved a dark cloud into our home. The family was harassing and wanted us to break the rules. I researched narcissistic abuse and realized my whole family is narcs, including my parents. A cousin tried to molest me at age four, I told. Nothing was done. No one will talk about it. I've always had issues with my family and just thought it was me. I'm the black sheep. Well, you know, when you're told at four that, you know, you're basically a sex, you know, a sexual object that, and if, and if you tell nothing happens, that kind of sets you on your path. Don't you think of where you, where you value in your family's hierarchy right there and then, huh? I fell into a clinical depression and got into therapy. Once I started therapy, my ex started acting paranoid and mean. I discovered I had CPTSD. While trying to talk to my ex about this, he said, hurry up, you're taking too long, just spit it out. He asked me not to talk to him about therapy and he was tired of the drama. I had to open up all the past wounds of our relationship alone. He was angry and yelled at me, told me to get over the past. When we met our relationship moved fast. I was never one to have I was never one to have to be in a relationship. We were always together and I never been so happy. The only thing odd about him was he was always was he always talked about his sister a lot. One comment that I blew off that seemed odd was what until you see my sister? She has I guess Wait until you see my sister. She has porcelain skin. She's so pretty. Uh, the family thing. <clears throat> Before I knew it, I was pregnant. And I would ask how, how much you, you look like the sister. Because if you and her look, look the same. Uh-oh. Before I knew it, I was pregnant and everything changed. I was sleeping on the couch. He said I kicked off too much heat. He'd barely speak to me. He'd sit in the bathroom talking to his sister for hours. Ooh, Jesus. I found out later his sister wanted to have a baby before I got pregnant. I now wonder if this is why my ex wanted one. They have a weird competition with each other. Sounds like my father and 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 my and his sister, my aunt. Everything's a competition between them. A competition he's lost. The only competition he won. And boy, does this explain a lot now that I think about it. Was she is pissed because she was pregnant. And had a miscarriage before I was born. So she technically like miscarried the first grandchild. And then I was born and I was the first grandchild. So I understand exactly what you're talking about there. It's like this weird, sick, competitive. And in your case, it's just sounds just sexual. Who knows? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, you sick fuck. Never stop digging, everybody. (sighs) 
makes sense. Anyway, back to you. He was constantly at the bars. He had to, I had to have a C-section. He never once held my hand or asked if I was okay. I'd have to page nurses to help me walk because I couldn't wake him up. I found out when our son was four months old, he was cheating. He said it was only emotional and begged me to stay. His sister would grill me about finding a career. She'd pick apart my hair, say I didn't come around enough and I was too quiet. The first time meeting, meeting, his, meeting his other sister was at Christmas. I opened her gift, used, used salt and pepper shakers. Salt and pepper spilled all over me. She also gave me a gift card for $25 that only had $10 and some change on it. Ooh, some jealousy issues, man. I mean, there's some shit going on. His sister signed my son up for T-ball without me knowing and was always crossing boundaries. She'd cry if I said anything, tell everyone I was drama, and then and I took her brother from her. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah. You did, because he's already married to her. I'd always find text messages to his ex and other women. He was addicted to porn. He always lied his way out of everything. I'd find out later I was right. I stopped going to a lot of his family functions because his sister told everyone I was trash and her brother deserved better. Her sisters would walk past me like I was invisible. I told him I was leaving so many times and he'd promised to change. He'd promised therapy. He went three times and refused to go back. I was ready to leave when I found out he was rubbing my sister's leg while she was asleep. I woke up to my sister crying. Again, I stayed. He promised to stop drinking and did for a while. Surprisingly, things seemed good for years. He worked hard and wasn't going to bars. We didn't fight and our relationship was good. He was always there for me if I needed him. And he put up the boundaries with his sisters. Well, I, I would hope so. I left two months ago after realizing he was cheating again. Cheating while we had a foster kid that he'd grill about being an honest person. He'd start going out again on the weekends and drinking. He was closed off to my son and I. I just knew by his behavior. He'd tell me he loved me constantly. He'd run home frantically from work if he thought I was upset. If I confronted him, he flipped out and told me I was delusional. He left for days drinking. He went days without seeing our son. My son was a mess and I had to hold it together. He ran to his sisters and they decided I had 30 days to get out. He said he wanted to be like Frank. That's his brother-in-law. I've noticed my ex's personality changes depending on who he's around. I hadn't worked in years because of my ex's crazy hours. I worked hard in our home and did everything including taking care of our son. He screamed at my son that he's too sensitive and needs help. I made him into a big crybaby. He told my son he was taking him to a therapist. He'd scream at me in front of him, calling me every name a child shouldn't hear. He wouldn't admit to cheating. I had to get the first job I could and figure out how to find a home. I couldn't go... I couldn't go stay with my family, and I had slowly isolated myself over the years. I now see I lost myself in trying to make my family work. If I didn't spend all my attention on my ex, he wandered off. I'm going into financial debt trying to stay afloat and help my son. My ex went to the neighbors and my son's friend's parents in the neighborhood. No one would talk to me. My son has... IBS anxiety now. I heard rumors my ex is saying I have a pill problem and he couldn't take me and my trash family anymore. He and his girlfriend over to the house before I moved. He left her scarf on my shoes and now has her belongings where my things used to be. My son has anxiety when he's with his dad and at the home. 
My ex doesn't realize he can't replace me to our son. It's way too soon. He hasn't healed yet. He drunk texted me one night and knew and I knew he drunk he drove drunk with my son. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do besides wellness checks. My son has told me my ex's family say awful things about me when he's not around. I'm fearful because my ex is a charmer and well-liked. His parents were the nicest people I've met. They were all heavy drinkers except his mom, who I got along with the best. When there's conflict, she runs out of the room. I'm wondering if there's things I don't know, clearly. Clearly. I know, what, Sergeant Schultz? I know nothing, I see nothing. She's an enabler. She's the only one who tried to contact me, but my therapist told me to go gray rock and cut ties. I agree. I feel like I'm always looking over my shoulder and my ex will try to get full custody. I made him put in the contract he wasn't allowed to have females or strangers around my son until he's healed. I try to talk to my ex about my son's anxiety and pain and he just responds with, I want to be happy. He missed days with his son and doesn't ever try. He only wants him when other people are around. My fear is time after time and his girlfriend is allowed around my son, what will happen? We both have night terrors and it's hard to get him to smile. My hair is falling out and I can barely sleep. My son hates school now and wants to isolate. He says he's just a bad kid. I'm trying to make enough to pay bills and help him. I want him in therapy. He talks with the school counselor, but my ex emails everyone daily, and they've had secret meetings. I've had the comfort of knowing he couldn't take my son. I'd have some relief. You know, if I had the comfort of knowing he couldn't take my son, I'd have some relief. My fear is I don't want my son carrying other people's BS on his shoulders like I have my whole life. I'm going to do everything to make sure he's healthy. Any advice for you or others? Thank you for your channel. Your, the channels and the people on YouTube are my only sanity. Nikki. Well, at this point, if he was going to take the kid, I think you, you, your son, I think he would have. Okay, what he's just trying to prove to everyone else is that he's a good guy somehow. Okay, because every time your son's around him, he, you know, he, he said he calls him weak and, and, and you made him that way. He doesn't really want to be his father. He doesn't really want him around. But he doesn't want anyone else to know that he doesn't want him around. So he has to build... It's easier for him to build this aura that you're this horrible person, that you're this, this crazy person that nobody can stand, okay? But meanwhile, behind the scenes, he's just as awful and terrible to you, okay, to gaslight you and to make you feel like you're nuts, to make you feel like he's going to take, he could do something horrible. He's not. I don't, I don't think he is. I think he's all talk. He's all talk for this is his desired effect to make you scared, to make you scared and for him to make himself feel better. So he looks like the good guy. So the people, so the people in his life and the people he really cares about his image, never find out the truth. The truth is, if he was going to come take your try, try something, he would have by now. He's trying to, he's just trying to make you miserable. Why? Because he can. It's that simple. And he doesn't care if he's hurting his own kid. He doesn't care if it's hurting you. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. So the best thing I, I, would, I would do for you is your son's going to be coming around an age where it's going to be up to him whether or not he wants to go with his father or not. Okay, and if his father is that abusive, and then you might have to take a take him to court anyway for only supervised visits. Who knows if it comes down that? But I don't think he wants to go that route. I really don't. I think he's just abusing you because he can. Because he can.
bottom line. So you got a gray rock, all of them, all of them, boom, no contact. And if your son wants to leave and he's there, tell him to call and you'll come get him. Like, you know, you know, you gotta, your son's gotta be able to call you at this point if something goes down where you can call him and be like, what the hell's going on? What is this? And if it gets to the point where your son doesn't want to go with him, then your son doesn't want to go with him. And that's hard to say, and that might sound like a weird thing coming from me, but it is what it is. Because they'll just abuse you because they can. So <clears throat> I hope that helps. So thank you so much for your contribution and your story. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it growing, expanding, and surviving because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here, you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.